uh, no big puzzle as to why when we bought this bag of clay, we had one person say, oh man, that's the best clay ever. And we had another person say, oh, really, you're gonna buy that? <laughs> screwdriver. <laughs> I had a really hard time um, getting the measurements right. It seems to move almost too well. It moves where you put it and then it moves back to where it was. So I dropped my mold to my normal limit and then um, went to pull up and it's like my, I lost my de the depth of my hole. Afterward, I realized I'm nowhere near where I want to be with this pot. There's all this clay down in the bottom. Okay, so then uh, I tried to drop the hole even further, uh, which is really hard to do. You can't, it's not, it's not something that a lot of clays will do well. well didn't really cause any problems. It doesn't seem to want to stay on the wheel, on the back. figured out that the pot was going to be void um, and it, it was interesting it felt a lot more flowy in my hands really did really did want to turn flips for me um, that being said I still didn't get anything out of it <laughs> the only one that I got up yesterday I left it uncovered overnight and it dried out. Dried out completely and totally unevenly. See those hairline cracks in the bottom? There they are. That was uh, still wet, wet, still have moisture in it. This was bone dry. What does that mean? That means this can't m move and this has to move. So, which way is it gonna move? That way. Than the opposite side of the pot. 
Okay, half a centimeter. So that means I drop my hole off center, uh, or it didn't wedge well enough. Okay, but I will say this, I was able to recover this, like from here down, recovered really, really nicely. This is how potters end up with a million salsa dishes. You know, you see online the people that uh, take the clay back and forth and do all these crazy nuts things on the wheels. Um, yeah, that's porcelain. <laughs> Clearly. It wants to do whatever you want it to. And then just undo whatever you want it to undo. Uh, it's really, it's really quite plentiful in the realm of what is it capable of doing. So I've just stretched it out twice and it's still, you know, it's not having any problems whatsoever. Coming back. There's no way I could do something like that with Phoenix. So it was all the way out to here, and now I just closed it. off of this is completely different than the slip off of Beamix. Um, so you can use less water, which is going to not weaken your clay as much, um, which uh, means that you've got a longer working time. So if you throw things that take a really long time to form or a really long time to shape uh, and you use porcelain, it doesn't like to stick to the bat. <laughs> but um, you will have more of an open time with it because you won't have to use as much water. I do think that pound for pound the um, height and width that I'm getting is a little smaller than what I normally get pound for pound with B-Mix. I am going to um, see if this whole wedging issue that I'm getting with this clay and that it won't um, is because it's too dry. Having never worked with it, I have no idea what the dryness level should or should not be. So I'm going to wedge this with some of the reclaim and um, see if, if, if porcelain takes more water straight out of the bag and this just got too dried out. night I came out I thought I'd get some trimming done really quick I, I went after this little vase here to trim and uh, the chuck let go went spinning off the wheel and got these big divots in it and I thought well I could fix that or I could learn so I'll cut it apart. Um, but look at the thickness of that wall. The thickness of the wall should be closer to like this, all the way down the pot. And it's like half an inch. Half 
inch walls. Are you kidding me? So I started thinking, what would cause that? What would cause that? Um, two things. I added water to this. And when you add too much water to a clay, um, it softens it up and makes it feel like butter while you're throwing it. But the walls are so floppy that the walls feel thinner than they actually are. I don't think that's what happened here though. And the reason I don't think that's what happened is that I measured it. And I had a lot more height, I think. But I've never thrown vases like this before, so I didn't measure it at the end because it had squatted down into nothing. And I was like, well, that's not what I intended for this to be. Porcelain seems to want to go back to where it was before, wherever that was in a really oddly strange way that I have never seen in any other clay. And what I think what happened was that when I was collaring this neck, instead of the clay moving up and in, up and in, it went back down into the pot and only the top edge came into collar. It's hard because I felt like it was coloring down real easily and really difficult at the same time. And I can't really explain that. This is my last several hours on the wheel on that, right? <laughs> No, I can get them up. It's just learning the clay. Why is all of that already dry? Exactly. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It is weird. I mean, it's like you put it on the wheel and it's like, oh, this is so nice. And then you cut it apart and it's like, wow, that's weird. There's also the whole... Like I try to put a handle on one of those and it was drying out so fast. I was afraid the handle wouldn't stick if I waited. Yeah, they, there's no window. You there's know. no window whatsoever. That's not going to work, you know. That's kind of what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? That's a clay that's not going to work. Kind of sounds like that lady was right. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, if all you make is tumblers, which from the guy that said this is great, all, you know, what were we looking at is tumblers, you know? Tumblers, maybe. Tumblers, bowls, plates, you know, dries out quickly, it dries out evenly, doesn't stick to the bat. He doesn't have much time to have to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. This is the other piece that I have gotten up so far. I attached Attach the handle. Um, I, I did that before I actually got it trimmed. And now it's too, because if I had tried to put this rim on the wheel head, it would have gotten all wonky on me. But now it feels like it's too hard to trim. It's kind of mind blowing how different it is. So I'm wondering if throwing with grog, a grogged clay is as different as throwing with porcelain is to the other stuff that I've been throwing. It's a Christmas candy dish made to look like Santa's bag. Just 
not on purpose. Santa's bag only tied up this time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This is making me understand a lot of things that I, um, I have rattled my brain over in the past. It kind of looks like a flower. man I give so I love this clay and I love this experience because it has taught me that you should never judge yourself by what you see other people doing ever um, because I could do things with this clay that I've tried with the other clays and I can't do it I cannot do it with the other clays you know the whole idea of oh my gosh how do they do that well mm, is their clay. <laughs> it's, you know, their clay is made to do whatever they're doing with it. And mine may not be. So I may not be, ab be able to reproduce their results because my clay is not really able or meant to reproduce their results. I did not at all at all expect there to be such a learning curve and for it to be so visibly different because my other clays they're not that different i am very thankful for my experience being 
I learned with a clay that was not porcelain and with a clay that was not really groggy because now I feel like I can, I can go towards porcelain or I can go towards grog if I choose to um, and learn those plays. Bottom line, it is a different production schedule. My production schedule leaves my pot sitting. Um, and wants the open time so that if I come in here and I don't feel like attaching handles today, squirting them down with some water and leaving them in their little plastic bags until I decide I'm ready to do handles is the way I like my schedule to work. Um, if you're one that is the opposite, I want to throw pots in the morning and attach handles at night, then, man, this would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, it would be worth getting used to. It would be worth the learning curve. But it's really uh, no big puzzle as to why when we bought this bag of clay, we had one person say, oh man, that's the best clay ever. And we had another person say, oh, really, you're gonna buy that? <laughs> From now on, I'm not going to look at what other people are doing and go, how do they do that? I'm going to look at what other people are doing and going, huh, that's probably porcelain. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that you have enjoyed this little jaunt through porcelain, at least in some capacity. <laughs> And I encourage you to try new things as always. I'm getting attacked by the flies and the mosquitoes. So I think we're gonna call it a day, um, but it's been a good one. So thanks for coming. Maybe I could pass that off as a sculpture. Oh. Guess I got my outtake for this video.